In this video, I'm going to demonstrate using NIVeristan 2009 to connect to a simulated ECU with the XCP and CCP master add-on. With the add-on installed, you can launch System Explorer and add a custom device to handle the connection. On the custom devices configuration page, you could select your database file, the ECU from the database that you wish to connect to, I only have one here, so I'll select that one. And then your master type. I'll be operating entirely on my laptop here, so I'll be picking TCP. And then the communication properties from the database populate here. If you wish to use the communication properties from the database, you can click this checkbox and only use those, or you can override them. On the characteristics and the measurements section, you can pick which characteristics or measurements from the database you wish to add to your system configuration. If you click on each characteristic or measurement, the data from the database will populate the screen. Here I'll add in everything except for PWM frequency. Everything that's been added to the system configuration will be read at the read rate here and be written to at the rate of the system. Uh, you can use the right decimation control to do some busload management if you have rapidly changing data mapped to one of your characteristics. The same thing goes for the measurement section. I'll go ahead and add in everything except for StimMe and Sawtooth 2. Here you can pick if you want to read with uh, DAC list or polling mode. In the DAC list mode, you should pick your event channel from the database. In polling, there is nothing to set other than the read rate. So after adding these in, you could close and save your configuration and launch the workspace to connect to your ECU. If I bring up my simulated ECU here, notice it's using TCP and waiting for a connection. When I launch the workspace, the custom device connects to the ECU, and then I could drop down graphs and controls and indicators to interact with the simulated ECU. One of the signals or measurements coming from the ECU is called PWM signal. If I drop a graph, I could see that signal. I could then interact with the characteristic PWM level to change the uh, duty cycle of the PWM. That's just how this simulated ECU works. So if I change this to 75, you could see the duty cycle change. Remember that I did not add in every single characteristic and measurement. I could still interact with those characteristic and measurements from the ECU even if they're not in my system configuration using the workspace controls provided with the add-on. If I pick single characteristic, it will give me the option of either picking from something in the system, selecting an item from a database file, or typing in the item manually. If I pick from the database file, I'll go ahead and pick PWM frequency. And here I need to e add in the IP address of my target. Notice I could see the PWM frequency here and the timestamp at which this value was retrieved. I could even change the frequency here and you'll see the frequency update even though this is not in my system configuration. The same can be done with a measurement with a measure, single measurement control. Also, there are curve control and field control to ease the use of interacting with a whole curve or field at a time. You could either pick from the database file or things that have already been added to the system as usual. Here I've already added in the one dimensional curve to my system. And you'll see it here. I could then edit the curve, the entire curve at a time and all these changes are applied to the ECU. The same thing with the field control. Again, I can pick from either what's in the system or what's in a database file and see the whole field in a single control. I could launch a 3D view or I could go edit the field and apply those changes to the ECU.